Now, you don't need me to tell you that these are tough times for students and workers alike. Your members are up to their eyes in debt, stuck with high rents, struggling to study and earn a living too. Often employed on the front line of casualization, with women and black and ethnic minority students often at the front of that front line. In bars and supermarkets and call centers, too often stressed out, overworked and underpaid. And that, that is why, that is why the TUC was so angry when this government had the cheek to rebrand the national minimum wage a living wage because anyone aged under 25 won't see a penny of that minimum pay rise as a right. Handing, they've handed bad employers a license to exploit young workers and undercut older ones, and shoveling salt into the wound of age discrimination. Delegates, all my working life, all my life as a trade unionist, I have fought for the right for the job. Not just a minimum wage, not even a living wage, but a fair wage, a fair, day's work, a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. And believe you me, delegates, the TUC will not rest until all workers get the fair pay they deserve, regardless of age, disability, sexuality, gender, race, or the passport you hold, fair and equal pay for all. Now, of course, uh, you know and I know this government is trying to make life harder uh, for all of us, but for us at the TUC to represent workers through its trade union bill, an attack that's not just uh, an attack on working people and unions, but an attack on the right to strike, something which is a fundamental civil liberty. Now, let's be clear, nobody ever takes uh, that decision to strike lightly. Most people can't afford to lose a day's pay. But when we're faced with unfair and unreasonable employers who just won't compromise, sometimes the strike is the only way to bring people to the negotiating table. So let me promise you this, delegates. The harder this government hits us, the harder we will fight back. Now, I, I know that we're not alone in the firing line. I understand the government has just published a green paper on higher education. And suddenly, suddenly it seems the government wants to take a close look at the activities of student unions. Apparently, they want to ensure that you are, quote, transparent and accountable. Hmm, that sounds very familiar, very familiar. Wherever there is dissent, Wherever there is a threat to the party line, whether it's the BBC, the NHS, uh, trade unions and the NUS, it seems that the government wants to make us more transparent and accountable. If only David Cameron would put an ounce of the energy he puts into investigating the NUS and trade unions into putting his own house in order, this country would be in better shape. Given, given everything that we now know about Panama, if he really cares about transparency, I would have thought he'd be busy sorting that one out. In, instead of attacking students fighting for fair funding, he should be getting tough on greedy tax dodges. Instead of cutting education and the NHS, it's about time that the wealthy and wealthy corporations paid their fair share of tax. But I believe, I believe that the best possible response that we can make to these attacks is for us to get bigger and stronger. The TUC is planning a major new campaign to build young workers' membership in unions, so please help us spread the word that the best way to win fairness is to join a union and to organise. And I hope that you will join me in sending solidarity to all those young workers who have had the courage to sign up, join a union and fight for their rights in Sports Direct, 
in Amazon, in cinema chains like the Ritzy, and last but not least, I hope, delegates, you will join me in sending a message to those magnificent apprentices at Port Talbot who are fighting to save our steel industry. And it is wonderful to see so many apprentices amongst your delegates here today. I, I too just want to say a very quick word about Europe because we are now so close to that referendum on our membership of the EU. Now the TUC's position is very clear. We believe that a Brexit would pose a real threat to workers' jobs, our livelihoods and our rights. Many of the rights that we take for granted from equal rights for part-time workers to stronger protection against discrimination and, of course, paid holidays. These have been won because unions banded together across borders and we won it through the EU and it's now guaranteed by the EU. Rights that working students rely on and that union agreements build on. Now, I know there are different views about the referendum and I respect that. And I share the view that the EU is far from perfect, but believe that we can only win change from within. And I will tell you this for nothing, delegates. I won't be taking any lectures from the likes of Boris Johnson, Zach Goldsmith or Nigel Farage about what's best for workers. And I certainly won't stand by and let migrant workers get scapegoated for everything from lousy pay to pressure on public services. <laughs> Delegates, migrants aren't the enemy. Exploitation is. And if, if politicians really want to tackle the problems that workers and students face, then it's simple. Stop the cuts and start investing. Get tough on bad bosses and rip off landlords. And instead of kowtowing to big corporations and the banks, stand up for the interests of workers, students and citizens for a fairer, greener Europe with great jobs and homes at its heart. So when June the 23rd comes, I hope students turn out in force to get your voices heard. There is nothing inevitable about the world that we face now. There is nothing inevitable or natural about inequality. The status quo is not the only option. Another Europe, another world is possible. Because from student tuition fees to mental health services, the NHS rights at work, at the heart of all of these debates, it's about values. It's about what kind of society we want to live in, what kind of education can serve everyone, what kind of economy can work for all. Now, I think we know where the government's values lie. They claim that they're the party of working people, but try telling that to the steel workers or the junior doctors. They claim to be compassionate conservatives. Well, not if you're disabled and heard the Chancellor announce that he was robbing benefits to give the wealthy a tax handout of four billion pounds. And they claim, they claim to be the party of education and opportunity. But delegates, not if your face doesn't fit. How many talented students from working class families can afford to take an unpaid internship? How many women have to think twice before taking on student debt when they know they'll face a lifetime of unequal earnings? And as the TUC report showed that we published last week, where is the opportunity for young black graduates when they are likely to end up more than twice as likely unemployed? Together, the NUS and the TUC, we reject the politics of privilege. We know that inequality within any one generation is far greater than inequality between generations. We reject that old politics of divide and rule. As a movement representing uh, people of all faiths and none, we know that if we listen to each other, if we learn from each other, if we encourage each other and respect each other, then there is real strength 
in diversity. So I want to finish where I started. As I said at the beginning, we will always be stronger together. And the real test of any movement is not how it fares when times are easy, not when we can win easy victories, but how it fares when times are tough. Now, there have been times in our history when we have transformed adversity into opportunity. And I believe that this can be one of those times. If we work together, if we stick together for our values of compassion, equality, and justice, then delegates, I believe, together we will win. Thank you very much indeed.